So you guys have probably seen the really popular stools out right now by Serena and Lily. When I saw them, I just thought that this was a project I had to take on and I really wanted to use the lathe for most of them so that I could work on those skills. Now I'm totally excited to share this with you guys because I love how they turned out. I really like them and it really wasn't too difficult. I had this piece of maple that I got inexpensively because it was from a cutoff sale. So where they make big slabs, this was just a piece that they weren't gonna use. It's just slightly over two inches thick and about 10 inches wide. So it will work perfect for this project. And I'm starting off here by just cutting two pieces off 10 inches wide. Now, since I want the top of my stool to be nine and a half inches thick, I'm just cutting them down to 10 inches here on the miter saw. Then I run over to the band saw and I cut down two inch strips for the legs. So at the end of the day, I want my large stool to sit at 19 inches tall and the shorter one to sit 15 inches tall. So figuring that the top is about two inches and then figuring that the legs are gonna be slightly angled so I'll need just a little bit more. I want my legs to end up being just slightly over 17 inches for the tall ones and slightly over 13 inches for the smaller one. So when cutting them down, I'm gonna make sure to leave a lot of extra room here I'll be using this piece of maple to screw into for the part that's going to go in the lathe. So interesting thing here that I will share with you that is definitely not something to follow, but my husband had put a metal pipe clamp up right on the lathe and he had put all the other checks and accessories somewhere completely different. I don't know, he just decided to rearrange things and this was his new method. So since I'm still kind of new to a lot of the lathe work, I figured that this must be what I was supposed to use. So you see me actually using a metal pipe clamp for this. Now, luckily by some miracle, it happened to thread in and it held in very tight. However, this is not what it's meant for. I would not recommend this and I will not be making this mistake again. And here I am just gluing on those maple pieces. And I'm using a small screwdriver just to make sure that I have it exactly in the center. And although not shown on camera, I actually took these inside and put a big weight on top of them and let them dry inside the house. Next, I'm coming over to the lathe and you can see that it is too big to turn around. Now, I could have moved the lathe out. Luckily, this lathe has a feature where I can actually just flip it out to the outside. But rather than doing that, I just marked the edges where I wanted to cut and I just brought it on over to the bandsaw and cut off those corners. So now it, you can see it will turn all the way around without hitting on the lathe. And I'm just getting my tool rest all set up and in place so that I can get started. Pretty quick process on these stool tops. I just had to get them smooth and round. So there are other options besides using the lathe. I've seen people use a jig on a table saw as well as a jig for their band saw to cut just a perfect circle around. You could also, if you don't have those expensive tools, you could either use a jigsaw and actually cut it yourself, or you can just go to your local hardware store and find just a round piece of wood to use that's already cut for you. So since I had this on the lathe and sanding is so easy on here, I just finished up the outside right here. 
This gives me a really nice finish and it keeps it perfectly round. And there we have it. So the top and bottom are not finished, but the outside has a nice sanded finish on it. Now that I'm done with the first one, I just do the same process for the second one. So now I'm just gonna run over to my planer and I'm going to remove that piece of maple and then just smooth out both the top and the bottoms of these stools. With both of the tops at a good starting point, I moved on to the legs. I started off with finding the center of both sides. Then I used a spur and just kind of pounded it in place just to imprint it and make marks so that it would hold tight right where I wanted it to. Then I went over and I put it onto the lathe and I put the tail stock on the other end just to hold it in there tight. So I got it in with a good solid hold. However, the spur is never going to hold quite as tight as a chuck. So I just focused on the end here and got it to the right width where it would fit into the chuck. And as you can see, that is a good solid hold. It really grips to a lot of the wood in there and it will hold it firm. So now when I'm applying pressure and trying to smooth out the whole distance, I can be sure that it's got a good solid hold. And I'm still using the tail stock on the other side. So now I'm going along and I'm just starting the smoothing process. I just moved slowly and did a few passes just to get it round. If you like this build, please subscribe below. And I would love to hear from you guys in the comments below on things that you would like to see me build, on things that you have built. And if you try this project, please let me know how it goes. I used a string, as you can see, just to make sure that I had it all the right thickness. And using the string, I kind of noticed the areas that were a little thicker, and I just tried to go along and shave off those areas a little bit, just working to make it all the same thickness. This is a lot harder than it looks, especially for somebody that's new at this, but it was a great project for me to work on and a great learning. Now for the bottoms of the legs, I just marked where I wanted the bottom of the leg to be and you can see I'm just cutting in here and I leave about a half inch width that I'll need to cut off later. But I'm just trying to kind of smooth out the bottom of the leg here on the lathe again just because it's going to be so much easier to do here and it's going to make it even. So I'm just rounding it up slightly on the edges what I want is the bottom of the leg to be slightly curved, so almost like a dome, if you will, but not a whole circle, because I do like the look of it pretty flat. I did this process with all six of the legs. Then I'm coming back here and hooking it back in to do the sanding. And you can see I've set up something different for my dust collector here. And this is just what I use when sanding because there is so much dust that comes off of this. You can see I'm also using my face mask as well. I just don't wanna be breathing in these tiny little particles. And now to cut off the excess piece of wood on the bottom. You can use a handsaw or many other methods. I'm just using the bandsaw because it's available. So I don't have a vise in my shop. So I'm just using this Rockwell jaw horse that I have and I'm just clamping in these legs and taking the sander and sanding down the tops. I just want to get rid of that blunt end that I just cut off there and just make it rounded as well. So to show you, here's what I started with and you can see that 
blunt cut that I made with the bandsaw and here it is all sanded down. Still a curved shape, but nice and smooth. And now moving on to the tops. I'm just gonna sand down the tops and the bottoms of these just to get them nice and smooth. I'm going to run them through the router, so I may have to come back and sand again, but I found that I try to get them as finished as possible before doing the router because if I try to sand them too much after the router, I end up pretty much sanding off all the work that I did with the router. Hoping that makes sense. I just took the tops over to the router and I'm using a half inch rounding over bit. Now one of the stools I rounded over the top and the bottom and the other one I just rounded over the top. I just wanted to figure out if there was much of a difference in the look and I wanted to kind of play around with it a bit. So my stools may look slightly different, but this is kind of for you guys to just kind of get a feel for what they look like. And I don't know, maybe one will look better than the other one and you'll want to go that route. Now the router did leave some marks on the stools. So I'm just going back and doing some hand sanding just to get out any marks that were left. And now I'm cutting the legs. I set up a stop on the miter saw to make sure that the legs are the exact same length. I'm just going to drill a hole for the hardware that I bought to attach these legs onto the stool. So the hardware that I bought comes with screws and threaded inserts. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to drill a hole down for the screw to go into. And then you'll see I'll use an even bigger bit that will go down just slightly so that there's room for that threaded insert. And here I am just putting in the threaded insert and the screw will just screw right in to this. And you'll see that some screwed in more than others. And I think that was just because my angle was slightly off when drilling it in, so it didn't go in all the way. Rather than take it all apart and try to fix it in the leg, I'm just going to make fixes to the top of the stool that will make it all sit in great. So I'm going to find the center of my stool top just so I know what I'm working with here and then just kind of figure out where I want each of the legs to be. For the smaller stool, I inset the legs about one and a half, one and a quarter inches. And for the tall stool, I put the legs in about two inches. Then once I had everything marked, I started just drilling into the stool at a slight angle to allow room for any of the screws that needed to go into the stool top a little bit. And then I just test them, set them in and see if they fit in right. Once I got them fitting in right, I just took that bracket and screwed it onto the stool top. So here was my stool all put together. And at this point, I could have finished them off and had two really nice looking stools. But I started off with a plan and I wanted to make it happen. So I measured up on each of the legs, not quite halfway, and put some tape around just to give me that nice crisp line. Now since in some areas I could really see that wood grain, I decided to use some wood filler just to fill those areas. With the wood filler dry and sanded, I'm now moving on to the paint. And I'm using Bare Beach House for my paint. And I remove all of the tape right after painting so that it doesn't chip when removing it later. 
I am doing a mineral oil bath for both of the tops. And so I'm just soaking them in here for 20 minutes. Now this gave them a really, really nice finish. However, I end up finishing the legs different and so they won't look exactly the same. I wanted to put a finish on the legs. Now I decided to use polyurethane on the legs because I want a good hard coat on these legs so that the white paint doesn't end up chipping and the bottom of the stool with the white on it, I don't want to get on my floor. Now I'm using a plastic bag here just to make sure that when I'm putting on the top coat that it's not getting on the bottom of the stool there. If I had this to do again, I would do poly on the tops as well rather than mineral oil. However, I hadn't thought it through when I got to that step. And since I already put mineral oil on the top, I can't put polyurethane over it. And I'm just gonna follow up with a Johnson's Paste Wax for the seat top. I am so happy with these stools. I really like the look of the contrast with the white and the darker wood. And I wasn't sure about making two, but I'm sure glad I did it now because I think they really look good together and I can put things on both of them and they really look like a set that goes together. And no build would be complete without some durability testing. Hey, this channel's legit. <laughs>